with the work made. Okay. Um, I just want to let everybody know that the workplace idiom, I created it myself, okay, based on uh, what I hear on television and based on what I see on CD4. Uh, you know, I watch CD4 24 and then you know, I read the sentences. And if I like the sentence, I pause and then I write. And then I create a lesson. Okay. And so this is a part of it. And I Google some pictures on Google to match with, with the idioms. Sometimes the idiom is in the choices of the expressions. Uh, sometimes they are inside the conversation. Okay. So I'm going to start with, I'm going to share um, our classwork because it is there right in the class uh, under the classwork um okay so hmm. is it too small everybody yeah it is okay okay so i can uh i don't know why it's too small Oh, okay, okay. So, so sorry. <laughs> no, because I have not clicked yet. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, you were right. It was too small. Okay, but it's okay now, right? Okay, I'm going to start with number one. Um, number one, let's have uh, Mamun and Alejandra. So, Mamun, you're going to read the conversation in, in the blue box. And Alexandra, you're going to select the answer. Okay? And I will confirm if your answer is correct. Okay, Mamun, go. Okay. I, uh, teacher, I... It's too small, sorry. Yeah, it's still small in, in my, my screen on your screen yeah okay. Um, okay let me see how i can make it bigger i can oh you know what maybe you can, i can do it like this right? is this bigger yeah now it's okay are you sure thank you mama yeah I'm sure. you're very well okay mama go okay uh adrina thank you no adrian <laughs> Adrian. Adrian. Adrian, thank you for your 500 donation to the children's summer camp. I really appreciate it. I am glad to be of assistance. Very good. So that is the answer. I am glad to be of assistance. Now, I'd like uh, Fiorella, can you please read? All the number one, two, three, four senses. The choices. Yes. You're very absent minded. Don't be so self conclusion. Con Conscious. Conscious. Sorry. I'm glad to be of assistance. Oh my God, what a shame. Yes. Okay. Now, Everybody, I'm going to take advantage of this moment also to teach you pronunciation, okay? So sentence number one, it should be absent-minded, absent-minded. You stress the second, the second word of the compound uh, adjective. You're very absent-minded. You're very absent-minded means you always what? Anybody are, dis are distracted. Distracted. Distracted? No. When you are absent-minded, you are what? What's happening to you? You, you forgot forget. something. You understand yes. something. You always forget. Yeah, oh, forget something. Right? You're, if you're absent-minded, means like you're thinking and you cannot come up 
you forget things, right? Like an old person. So that is absent-minded. Like it is here, but when people talk to you, suddenly you say, um, oh my God, I, 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 oh, what's happening to me? I can't remember. And they say, oh my God, you're very absent-minded. Okay. Now, number two is don't be so self-conscious. When you are self-conscious, you are shy because you think people are watching you. You know that feeling? Now, like when you check your dictionary, self-conscious means um, you're shy, but it's not enough. You know, you need a teacher to explain it uh, to you. So when you are self-conscious, you are so shy because you think people are watching you or judging you. Yeah, you got it? Uh, like, for example, did, you, did, it, did it ever occur to you that when you are shopping at Dalarama or Walmart, your English is so good? But when you come to this class, you cannot speak English well? Did you have that kind of experience, everybody? Yes. <laughs> that is because you are self-conscious. You think, oh my God, Maritza is good in English. She's listening to me. You know what I mean? Oh my God, Alejandra, you know, she's so confident, you know. Like you're comparing yourself with other people. And what is the result? You cannot speak English well because you are thinking, oh, people will judge me. And that is that your problem is not English. Your problem is psychological. Okay. And this, listen to this, this happens to teachers also. Yeah, it, it also happens to teachers, right? Uh, when teachers are in a meeting and then you know that everybody's a professional, sometimes you don't want to speak because you're afraid that people will judge you. I had that problem maybe 25, 30 years ago when I was a new teacher. I did not want to talk and I kept on pushing myself. So right now I am out of control. So when people are, when I'm in a meeting and I'm not talking, people worry about me. They think I'm sick. I'm really sick. So I was not talking. Right? I just want to share with you my experience because you can relate. You can resonate to it. Okay. So now I'm going to go to the next one. Let's have Shala and Robert. Oh, actually, I'm not finished with that, right? Okay. Yeah, the, the, the other things, uh, the other two are... Easy. Okay, Shala and Ronald. Uh, Shala, you start. Yes. Okay, I have to read that. Yeah, the one in the box. Okay. Excuse me. Do I know you from somewhere? Oh, I remember you. Work at the bank on on Young and Blur in Toronto, don't you? So, and I read the answers or just yeah. the oh, okay, number no, one, just one answer. Oh, just what the correct answer, you mean? Correct, yes. Um, mm, let's go. Uh, I think number one, I don't believe so. You must have me confused with someone else, okay. Now, Ronald, your answer is correct, but I like you to read it like you are talking. Okay. For example, oh. Shala says, Excuse me, mm -hmm. do I know you from somewhere? Oh, I remember. You work at a bank on Young and Blue in Toronto, don't you? Oh. I don't believe so. You must have been confused with someone else. You see, like you are talking, right? Like a oh. conversation. Okay, okay, Shala, one more time. Excuse me. Excuse me. Do I know you from somewhere? Oh, I remember. You work at the bank on Young and Bloor in Toronto, don't you? I don't believe so. You must have me confused with someone else. Beautiful, Ronald. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Ronald, you have changed big time, you know? <laughs> since, <laughs> that time, since the time I met you. <laughs> okay. Okay, beautiful. Okay, so... 
So, okay, so now that is, you, you know, like sometimes, uh, okay, let, let's put it in, in a context. Okay, sometimes you are at a party and you see somebody who looks familiar, okay? So, and the person keeps on looking at you. Approach the person, approach the person and say, excuse me, do I know you from somewhere? Yeah, you can just cut it there. Excuse me, do I know you from somewhere? And then, for example, it's Maritza. And Maritza will say, um, I think so. Were you in Andrew's class three years ago? Yeah, you know what I mean? He said, yes, oh yeah, and you are Maritza. Yes, and you are Fiorella. Oh my God, good. you look lovely in person. Even if it's not true. <laughs> Yeah, you, know, you, just have, you just have something positive to say, right? Okay, so, uh, so for example, somebody says to you, ladies, especially Valentina, you're single. Some men will come to you and play that they know you. Why? Because they want to open a conversation with you to know you. So you've got to be careful, okay? So a, a handsome, an ugly man, Valentina, approaches you, out of um in a in a disco in a club and says hi um i think i know you and valentina look at the guy if the guy is ugly you say um no i don't think so and then go run away <laughs> but if handsome will say oh yeah i think i know you even you don't know because he's good looking right <laughs> okay so anyway let, let me select that, some techniques some men Okay, you call that in English punchline. You know punchline? A punchline is a sentence that you will say, no, it's not punchline. Uh, I think so, yeah. A punchline is a sentence that you will say to somebody, to a man or to a woman that you don't know so that the person will talk to you to start a conversation with him yeah to start a conversation oh my one is interested huh? <laughs> okay so if especially uh, Ahmed, especially if you're single you need to know punchline okay um and sometimes Ahmed, the punchline is if you see a lovely lady take your five dollar bill drop it drop it behind the lady and and then and then and then go to the lady like this and then pick up the money say excuse me is this yours but the money is yours <laughs> that is one way to open a conversation with a lady so that the lady and you will meet you like that Amit? or it's it's old-fashioned not sure i like it <laughs> i do it <laughs> Or, or Mamon, you can you, you can go to the lady and say, excuse me, is your name Angelina Jolie? <laughs> <laughs> and the lady will say, excuse me, my name is my name is not Angelina Jolie. Oh my God, you look exactly like her. If she likes you, she will stop and talk to you. But if she does not like you, say, excuse me, sir, I am not. And she keeps on walking. And if the lady keeps on walking, do not follow. Do not do not lower yourself that's right yeah yeah sure. if they don't want you to die why should they follow that's right yeah just like i was talking to my brother i said to my brother i said to my brother that taylor family taylor family me right that taylor family does not does not follow women who don't like them i said to my brother and my brother said my brother said to me yeah you're right hmm, that's also my rule <laughs> That's what my brother said. Yeah, of course. We're gonna go. Uh, we go. Let's go to the third one. Oh, by the way, um, look at number two. That calls for a huge celebration. That calls for a huge celebration. Ahmed, say to Allison, uh, today is my birthday. Okay, and then Alison read the number two. Okay, Alison. Okay, Ahmed, go. 
Alison, today is my birthday. That's called for a Jewish celebration, Ahmed. <clears throat> okay, so, so in, okay, that calls for a celebration means let's celebrate it. Let's celebrate. If you don't want to say huge, you can just say that calls for a celebration. Okay. Um, or, or, um, Mamun, show, no, no okay, maybe Valentina. Valentina, show your ring to, to Fiorella. Fiorella, look, I am engaged. And then Fiorella said, oh my God, that calls for a celebration. Come on, come on, let's go to Team Hortus. I'm going to buy you coffee. <laughs> and Valentina, don't, don't say, coffee is not a big celebration. <laughs> just, just be thankful, okay? Okay, so... Okay, look at number three. I've known Amanda Brown for ages. For ages. Um, um, Maria, uh, Shala, and um, Ahmed, when you say for ages, um, how many years? How many years? No, just guess. Don't overthink. Uh, 40. Of course. <laughs> okay, no. Actually, for ages has no number. Just say mm -hmm. for ages means for so many years. Okay. So, for example, Alison says to you, Ahmed, do you know? Do you know Hilalai? Oh, yes. I, I've known Hilalai for ages. It means for a long time. That's a, that's a beautiful idiom. Oh, or, oh, can you please, um, Ronald, can you please check my English? And Ronald says, oh my God, you're asking me to check your English? You've been in Canada for ages. It means for a long time, right? So use it. Those are beautiful. You know, these idioms that I've selected for you, I, um, I select, I mean, they, they are very popular, especially in the workplace. People will be using them, and if you don't know how to, un if you don't understand them, you lose. Right? People yeah. will think that your English is uh, is less than other people. Everybody, do you want to download this lesson? Yes, please. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is for you to download. I'm gonna have to after the class today. I will post the lesson on uh, on Facebook so you can download. Yeah, I think uh, it's faster, right? Can you give me the website for the Facebook, please? Because uh, I, I, I don't have the, the, the website or or the link. Okay, Mamon, just stay um, before leaving the class today. Just stay with me for three minutes. I'll give it to you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, like last time, I promised I think two people, and I forgot. I turn off the. I mean, I left the class, right? Okay, so uh, I hope I, I, I won't forget tonight. Okay, our Facebook page is very beautiful because our Facebook page, you are joined, you are combined with my weekend class, which means you will see level seven, eight, nine lessons. Okay, on, on our Facebook page. That's why I really want you to join. And okay, so next. We've got to go faster. Okay. Let's have Mina. Mina, can you hear me? Yes. Mina and Hani, can you please do the next conversation? Okay. Maybe, uh, Hani, you, you answer. Okay, Mina, you read. I am tired of working as a secretary. I want to go back to college so, college so I can get better job. I need you. I need your advice. Is phase four option? Uh, uh, I believe it. It should be if I wear your shoes, I would. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So the answer is number three. If I were in your shoes, I would. And then in normal conversation, you will continue. Okay. For example, I'm tired of working as a secretary. 
Mina, can you say secretary? Mina? Secretary. No, no. Secretary. Secretary. Okay. Okay. So I'm tired of working as a secretary. I want to go back to college so I can get a better job. I need your advice. And then answer, if I were in your shoes, I would take English classes to upgrade my level and take TOEFL or IELTS test and then apply to any prestigious college like Humber, Sheridan, Seneca, or Niagara College. Okay. If you, if you, you know, if you were going to continue. Okay. Okay. Now look at number one. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact means truly or really or in the fact is number two you didn't know henry is out of work out of work means no job out of work means unemployed in professional english if you have no job it is better to say i am unemployed instead of saying i have no job i have no job is okay but it's low english right I am unemployed. Now, the difference between, everybody listen to this, the difference between unemployed and no job, they are not the same. Because when you are unemployed, it means you have no job, but you want to work. Okay? But when they say, I have no job, maybe you have no job because you are lazy. Okay? Okay? If you have no job because you don't want to work, you cannot say, I'm unemployed. You can just say, I'm not working. But when you say to the Canadian people, I am unemployed, it means I have no job, but I'm willing to work. Okay? That is one difference that a lot of dictionaries will not explain to you. Okay. Um, when you say, I know it for number four, I know it for a fact, okay, means I am very sure. Okay, for example, I say, uh, Maritza, how do you know? Well, don't ask me. I know it for a fact. I've known uh, Alison for 20 years. We grew up together in my country. So I know it for a fact. I know her mother, her father, grandmother, I know. Okay, so I, I have no doubt. I have no doubt means I have no question. I have no doubt. It means I'm very, very sure. Okay, next. Um, I'm just like, I think I have to, have to change my strategy because we will not be able to finish the lesson. Okay, so, okay, let's do it this way. I'm going to ask students to do the conversation, like question and answer or reaction. And then if there is a sentence that you want me to explain, stop me before I move to the next picture. Is that okay? So we can go faster. It's only 7 o'clock. Yes, I'm okay. Right. okay, okay, okay. Now, let's have, okay, let me open the chat. Okay, let's have Ahmed and Alejandra. Okay, so now I'm just starting from the beginning. So if I ask you to do the conversation again, it is because I'm following the list. Okay, okay, Ahmed and Alejandra, please do number four. <laughs> okay, I will start. Yeah. Okay. Why don't you just get why don't you just get out of my face and leave me alone? I can't stand you. I can't stand everybody. Oh boy, you are you are in a rotten mood today. What's wrong with you? Calm down. Okay, very good. Rotten mood means bad mood, bad feelings, right? Okay. Okay, next let's have Alison. Uh, Andres, can you talk? Yes, can I? I can. I can do it. <laughs> yes, can I? Okay. Andres, we read your story. You came late. I'm sorry. I was driving. I... 
Yeah, no, it's okay, it's okay. That's what I thought. I asked Valentina to read your story. Yeah, I listened to Valentina. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, okay good. <laughs> okay. Okay, so let's have um, uh, Alison and Andres. Okay. Alison, you start. Alison, start. Okay. Come on. Okay. Hop in. Oh. okay. Come on, Andres. Hop in. I'm going to give you a ride home. Do you see the sky? It's about to rain. You will get soaked. Let's go. Uh, no, thanks. I'm going to a foot. I'm going to a foot. Walking is a good formal exercise. Correct. Okay. So, you know, Andres, you did not do this uh, test, Andres, but the test is beautiful. Yeah. It's so you're like, uh, you missed it, right? Okay. So, uh, so you got it. Okay. No, thanks. I'm going on foot. Means I'm walking. Okay. Yeah. Andrew, may I? Uh, can I question okay. something? Okay, Marisa, go. Uh, number one, I don't believe it. You are pulling my leg. What does it mean? Okay, you're pulling my leg means you're kidding me. You're joking okay. with me. Okay, thank you. Okay, for example, um, Andres asked Maritza. Maritza, Maritza say, uh, no, uh, uh, Maritza asked Andres. Uh, Andres, how old are you? Andres, you'll say 16. <laughs> and then Maritza, you're pulling my leg. Okay. 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 Um, okay, Maritza, ask Andres, how old are you? Andres, how old are you? No, it's how old are you? Yeah, yes. Yes. <laughs> Can you ask me again, please? Andres, how are I how old are you? I'm 16. Oh, you are pulling my leg. Okay, okay then Andres, uh, Andres, you can say, you're right, I'm 31. You're right, I'm 31. And then Maritza, you say, that's what I thought. That was I thought. Yes, <laughs> that's what I thought means that was my guess. Okay. Um, and then, and then, um, yes. Okay, good. Okay, let's have Priorala and Hani. You're next. Uh, okay, uh, Hani, uh, it, the, uh, you start because this is a man no, I really like lying it. to the wife. <laughs> I'm not having an affair with Shelsa. She came on. Uh, she came on to me. It was not my fault. You made a, a terrible mistake, big time. Is that? Uh, the Pirola, you got it, Pirola. But Pirola, In, yes. You know, you know, a lot of people, everybody, listen to this. 85% of the students were wrong with this. And I did too. <laughs> oh, you were also wrong? <laughs> I did too long before, yes. <laughs> but you got the answer. You made no, a yes, but mistake. <laughs> In my <laughs> homework, I did wrong. <laughs> okay, so this is what I was like telling you, everybody, that this is what I was telling you uh, earlier, right? The, the reason why you did not get the, the correct answer is because you were translating. Okay, look at that. I'm not having an affair with Chelsea. She came on to me. It was not my fault. And then a lot of people say, you lied. I had no doubt whatsoever. Now, why is number one wrong? Because number one is a little bit like maybe 70% correct, right? But it is not 100% correct. Why is it wrong? Because of the grammar. You see, you lied to me. If the sentence is, you're lying to me, you know, then it's correct. You are lying, not you lied to me. Okay? So, it's uh, the... The, the best answer is you made a terrible mistake, big time. Ladies, when you are arguing with your husband, you want to push that he did something wrong, you say, you, you are so late, big time. 
You lied to me big time. I hate you big time. You know what I mean? <laughs> Alison said, no, no, I love my husband so much. I cannot. In my country, <laughs> relationship is not about angry, you know. It's about respecting, loving. Hey, I agree. Okay. Okay, so I'm a, remember everybody, I'm a teacher. As a teacher, I'll teach you or give you some examples of what you can do. But in the end, you're adults. You, you decide or you choose if you want to do it. Yeah, you know what I mean, everybody? So, like, don't make it, like, so dramatic in my class. Because you're adults. You are not children. You will decide eventually. You know? Just like, for example, even if I work so hard in teaching you English, um, I will not be successful because the, 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 this, the final decision is your decision. <clears throat> okay. So next, oh, you know what? This, this picture, a lot of idioms. Okay, you know what? Let me, it's not, you know, if I, uh, if I cannot finish the lesson, then we cannot, but I need, I cannot leave it this way, okay? So here, hold your horses. Hold your horses means wait a minute. Andrew, let's go. Hold your horses. Let me grab my keys. Means wait a minute. Hold on a minute. Big time. Okay, you made a terrible mistake. Big time. When you add big time um, at the end of your sentence or as a single answer, it means it's, it's very much or it's a lot. How many people came to the party? Oh, big time. Okay. Now, okay, look at number four. No sweat. No sweat means easy. No big deal means it's not a problem. Uh, for example, uh, Andres, can you drive me home? And Andres looks at me and he says, oh, no big deal. It means no problem. Okay. Uh, or um, I owe you eleven dollars, and I say, "Oh, Alejandro, I owe you eleven dollars, but I only have ten dollars today. Is that okay?" And then Alejandro says, "Oh, no big deal." You know, it's a very, very, very uh, famous, very useful idiom. Okay. Okay, next, let's have Hilalai and Ibrahima. Hilalai. Should I read it? Uh, Ibrahima. Okay, okay, Hilalai, you start. Sure. I'm starving. I wonder where I can get something to eat. Coffee and donut, maybe. They are open 24 7. Yes. Okay, that is the mm -hmm. answer. Actually, I worry a little bit about this because something is missing, right? Uh, it should be, oh, but if I say go to Tim Hortons, they are open 24 7, then you know the answer very quickly, right? Yeah. That's why I did not put go to Tim Hortons. Hmm. Okay, I know. Okay, now look at number three. Oh, oh. Number two, uh, you drive me up the wall. You drive me up the wall means you make me crazy. You know, you, you give me a headache. Uh, cut it out means stop it. I know I understand. I feel you. I feel you means um, I understand how you feel. Okay? So, for example, you see that Hilala is so upset with a boss. And you see Hilala doing like this. And then you just put, just give her a pat on the back and you say, I feel you. It makes her feel better. You know, because <laughs> in life, you know, we need support, right? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so, uh, okay, look at this number four. 
Timothy is rolling in dough. Rolling in dough means rich. Remember I said, oh, you have money? Oh, yeah, I'm rolling. Mm -hmm. I'm rolling is short for I'm rolling in dough. Okay? A lot of people now do not say dough. They just, they just say I'm rolling. It means I'm so rich. Now, when you say I'm rich, I'm rolling, it doesn't mean that you are real rich, rich. It means you have a lot of money today. Okay. Um, okay, next. Okay, next let's have. Oh, Jethro is here. Yes, teacher. Hi. Uh, okay, yes. I hope I, I'll see you later, okay? I'll see your pic, your face later. Okay. Jethro okay. and Mamun. Mamun, you answer because Jethro is a new student. <clears throat> okay. Uh, okay. No, Mamun will read. Okay. okay. Uh, Jethro, you read first. Okay. Uh, this will cost an arm and a leg. Uh, who's going to pay for all of these? Uh, okay. Don't be so chicken. You deserve raise. <laughs> is that the answer? <laughs> uh, Mamun, I'm sorry, that is not the answer. No. Oh, shit. <laughs> I, I think it's the four, no? Yeah. It's the number four, no? Yeah. Yes, okay. Okay, Jethro, what is the answer? Uh, it's your birthday. Don't worry, it's on me. Ramon! Ramon, the answer is the number four. It's your birthday. Don't worry, it's on me. Okay. Uh, Jethro, no, because, uh, uh, honestly, I uh, sorry for that. Uh, honestly, I don't understand the question. What, teacher? Sorry, I don't. Oh, okay, J just a second, Jethro. Um, okay, Mamun was saying something. Uh, okay, okay, I understand. Okay, uh, Mamun, the, sen the sentence, this will cost an arm and a leg, means this. Food will cost a lot, a lot of money. Who's going to pay for all of these? It will be too much money. So the answer is, it's your birthday. Don't worry. It's on me. It means it's your birthday. Don't worry about it. I will pay for this. You got it, Mamo? Yeah. So what about the chicken? <laughs> okay. Number one, don't be so chicken means don't be afraid. Yeah, yeah that, that's I know I knew it. Yeah, no, no, but the second sentence, but Mamon, the second sentence is you deserve a raise. We are talking about work here in number one, but the, the situation is about the restaurant. You got it? That's right. Yeah, okay. So, okay, don't be so chicken means don't be afraid, don't be nervous. Uh, you deserve a raise, it means. You deserve to get more money from work. Number two, you're such a mama's boy. Okay, everybody, do you understand the word? Uh, do you understand the idiom mama's boy? Yes. 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 Mama's boy is a man who is always say, Oh, mama, 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 it needs mm -hmm. money. Mama, mama, mama. If you have a girlfriend, the girlfriend says, uh, let's get married. And, and, and the boyfriend says, let me ask my mama. After marriage, uh, tell his yeah, mom. Can, can, we have, <laughs> can we have one more baby? And then the, the man says, let me ask my mama. Oh my God. It's not mama's problem. <laughs> mama's boy like that, always asking. Uh, mama's boy is a man who is always asking help or opinion from the mother. Mm -hmm. And married have a job, but they want to live with a mother. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then the mother doesn't like the wife. The wife is sad. <laughs> and then, okay, forget it. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Number three, you have a sugar daddy. Okay. What is a sugar daddy? Uh, sugar daddy means like some young girl 
It's I heard that too. <laughs> We fall in love because of their money, but old man. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mais ce, comme on appelle ça, yeah. il aura failli bire une tongo et plein plein là. Mais parce que juste ce bas ce bas dans sa fille. Parce que. Ibrahima. I don't think so. You're yeah. Okay, so a sugar daddy is a man the, that has a younger woman, but the younger woman does not love him, mm -hmm. loves only his money. The sugar daddy pays the rent and buys a car for the girl, but in the end, goodbye. You know? Okay, sugar daddy. <clears throat> okay. Uh, okay, next. Okay, number nine. Number nine, let's have. Oh no, Jethro, I was asking you. Yes, teacher. Uh, Jethro, where are you from? I'm from Colombia. Oh, really? Hello? Yeah, I'm from Colombia. Um, from Barranquilla, Colombia. Let me put the camera. Uh, okay, okay. Sorry, because I, yeah. I thought that you were like uh, uh, French speaking. No, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah, because I was listening to you. I said, oh, Jethro, um, you sound like Latino, you know, because I thought that, because I had a student before. His name is Jethro yeah. and he's from Haiti and his first language is, is French. Oh, I'm from Colombia. My, my first language is, is Spanish. Uh, yes, you're from Barranquilla, like uh, from the... Yeah city of Shakira, right? Yeah, the same city, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, my Colombian friend, uh, she is yeah. in Barranquilla right now. She's, uh, she is uh, on vacation cool. uh, in Barranquilla. Beautiful, beautiful place. A lot yeah, of culture. Yeah. And I love Thank the, you. I love the, you know, the old, old town of Barranquilla. Yeah. It's like, it's like Europe, you know? And yeah. uh, like, you know, uh, um narrow streets and yeah. then beautiful buildings with different colors i love it it's my, yeah. one of my dreams to, to visit barranquilla mm -hmm. santa, marta santa marta santa marta and san andres is great too yes. welcome yeah. welcome to the class uh, Jethro. thank you so much okay so Jethro, so far how are you feeling in the class are you happy yeah i'm happy uh it's my it's my second level here. Uh, I like I like to to improve my English and all of that. Yeah, Jethro, just like uh, just oh, did uh, do you have a school email or not yet? Yeah, I have my, I have the the pdsp.net. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so which means can you please um, if you have the time, please go back to the, just click on classwork and just do the homework. Even you're late, it's better late than never. Yeah, I'm doing, I was doing right now all day. Yeah, yeah. oh really, you're a responsible person. Yeah, I, I, I made the, the about me, something like that. Wow. The first one, and I you submit are, it. Oh, you no. are, and I'm gonna do the no, not the about me. Uh, yeah, I was doing the, the needs, the needs. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing right now the about me. Okay, okay, wonderful. Okay, you're a dream come true to teachers because I did not need to tell you, but you are doing it right. You call that a responsible person, right? Okay, so anyway, yeah, welcome to the class. Thank you so <laughs> okay. much. Okay, so next, let's have um maritza and nina okay maritza you say maritza angry stop smoking okay. <laughs> okay stop smoking especially in the car you are setting a bad example to my kids you have got to be very careful children emulate emulate what they see you know that yes mm. okay so now here i okay so um 
especially the men, right? Um, when your wife says to you, do you love me? Very good answer is the number one. I love you more than you will ever know. <clears throat> the sentence is beautiful. The sentence means you cannot be inside me. So because of this, you cannot measure what, how much I truly love you. But I just want to reassure you that I love you more than what, uh, more than you will ever know. Have you ever heard this uh, statement, Maritza? Yes. Your husband said it to you? Yes, but in Spanish. <laughs> no, yeah, in English. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyway. Okay, and then say, okay, look at number two. Tricia is very materialistic. Materialistic is a person who focuses on, um, it's a person who focuses on material things. Like, I will marry you because you have a house. I will come to the, to the nightclub with you because you have a car. Um, I will invite you to my birthday because you always give me a present. That is materialistic. Now, and then another idiom is a gold digger. A gold digger is a person who is looking for relationship in order to take something from that relationship. Okay? Like a beautiful lady or a very good looking guy looking for a rich woman or a rich man for a relationship, use the person, take the money, make the person spend money, and after that, when the person cannot spend anymore, goodbye. Okay, look at number three. You've got to be very careful. Children, emulate. Emulate means copy. Copy, okay? So be careful, parents. Uh, whatever we do, the children are looking and they copy. Okay, they copy us. Okay, next. Let's have... Ronald and uh, Sadja, you can, can can you speak or you prefer not to speak today? It's all right, teacher. I can. You can. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Ronald, uh, Ronald, you are yep. the dad. You're the father, and mm -hmm. <laughs> Sadja mm -hmm. is your daughter. Okay. Okay. okay Sadja, Sadja, you are the baby girl. <laughs> you know, daddy. Okay, Sadja. <laughs> um okay uh you know daddy i love you you very very much do you love me too <laughs> uh, mm, oh come on you know the answer right you're my life my everything <laughs> beautiful ronald you have a beautiful voice ronald oh really <laughs> uh, i'm not kidding you know your, your music is correct no oh. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Very good. Okay. This is a beautiful way to speak with your children. Daddy, do you love me? Oh, you know the answer. You are my love, my everything. Okay. Especially the daughter. Oh, my God. They are so close. Um, in your culture, everybody, in your country, um, are girls closer to the mother or to the father? To the, mother. to the mother. To the mother. You, you know why I ask? In general, no. the girls, they are closer to the father, and the boys, they are closer to the mother. This is in general. Okay? So, um, but it is very, very important for the father to spend a lot of time with the son. And you know, and I, I don't want to explain to you why <laughs> because we are recorded. <laughs> okay, so but you know, like for example, in my case, I have a son, I have a daughter, and my daughter is so close to me more than uh, to my wife. And so, and my son always, mommy, mommy, 
when I said to my son, Stephen, we're going to go to the movies. And my, my son said to me, Daddy, can I ask mommy first? And then I, I said to my son, why are you asking mommy? I'm your father. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. You know? Okay. Okay, now. Um, oh, okay. Look at number three. Don't push the envelope. Knock it off. Don't push the envelope. It's a beautiful idiom, which means, uh, like, for example, uh, you tell your father, Dad, I'm going to the movies with my friends. And your father and mother say, um, um, okay, you can go to the movies with friends, but please be home at 9.30. By 9.30 p.m., I'd like you to be home. And then, you know that the time limit is 9.30. That's the cutoff time. But you get home at 10 o'clock. In that situation, you're allowed to be out until 9.30, but you are home at 10 o'clock. You are pushing the envelope. Means um, you are going over what you are required not to do. Okay, for example, 10 o'clock, and then you come, uh, you arrive at 10 15. You're pushing the envelope. Or I say, um, Dad, I need. Uh, I need a hundred dollars. I have a project at school. And then the father says, okay, go to the, go to the, go to my door. I have money there. Just take a hundred dollars. When you open the door, you see there are 320 and you take 120. You were asking me a hundred, but you took 120. That is like pushing the envelope, right? Or the boss says, the meeting starts at 9 o'clock and you arrive at 9.05. You're pushing the envelope. Knock it off means stop it. Stop it. Andrew, yeah? I have a question. Knock it off is the same that could it out? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Knock it off is cut it out or stop it or quit. Um, it's also a more polite way of saying shut up. <laughs> okay, so next. Next, let's have uh, Shala and Valentina. Shala, you start. Shala. Yes, teacher. Yeah, and Valentina. Okay. Uh, just a second, Shala. Valentina is not ready. The... Yes. Okay, Valentina is ready. Okay, go. The, sorry, the situation is? The... No, the situation. Okay, the situation is getting worse. I see some, uh, some terribles on the horizon. Oh, it is really scary, but I am hopeful that we will soon recover from all of those. Oh, you're not aware the company is on verge, is going back bankrupt. Back okay, can you say bankrupt? Bankrupt. Yes, the company is on the verge of going bankrupt. Okay, correct. <clears throat> Now look at, okay, look at the situation first, because this one is a lot of idioms here. The, city, the situation is getting worse. I see some troubles on the horizon. I see some troubles on the horizon. On the horizon is an idiom. It means coming. I see some problems coming our way. I see some troubles on the horizon. It's really scary, but I'm hopeful that we will soon recover from all of these. 
Okay, look at number one. Can you run that by me again? It means, please repeat what you said. And the number two, you're not aware. You're not aware means you didn't know. Okay. The company is on the verge. On the verge means almost. Almost. It is nearing, getting closer to going bankrupt. Bankrupt means broke. No money. Okay, number three. You're very short-tempered. Relax. You're very short-tempered. Relax. Short-tempered means uh, your temper is short. You're impatient. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one. Okay, let's have the gender. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, the gender and and Ahmed. Ahmed. Yes, it's true. Okay, the gender and Ahmed. The yes. gender, you start. Brenda, that woman is a fraud. She doesn't love you. She she is a two timers in fact i saw her with another man last week you have got to be kidding me that's a lie correct okay now here uh brenda that woman is a fraud fraud you know fraud right a scam a liar she doesn't love you she's a two-timer a two-timer is a person who has a wife or a husband but still has another relationship okay okay anyway a two-timer is a play girl or a playboy a person who is playing with two relationships in secret a two-timer okay um Next, let's have Alejandra and Allison. Who is start? You start, Alejandra. I, okay. I thought I heard Mount calling. Did you, he did you hear her too? Let's go home. It's dinner time. Follow me. I am starving. Hurry round. Hey, wait for me. What's the rush? <laughs> oh, who said that, Alison? Yeah. Alison, you, 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 beautiful pronunciation, Alison. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. No, no, really, and you're a natural. That's Thank why I really, you know, I told you you've got to do the job that you used to do in the past, you know, because you will be successful. Thank you so much. <clears throat> okay, next, let's have Andres and Friarola. Andres. Hello, I'm you're ready. Having, you're having dinner? If yes. Oh my God. We starting. Okay, now if, no, I, if I say the name first, that person will start first. So okay. Andres and Fiorella. Okay. Amanda and I, Amanda and I have just gotten an engaged we are going to get married we are gonna get married on december 22 i'm so excited i'm nervous too oh let's go for a celebration i'm happy for you beautiful okay i like it andres i like it very much andres when you fix your pronunciation that is great andres great job <laughs> Thank you. When you said gonna instead of going to, right? Yeah. It means you're Andrew Taylor's son. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next. Let's have Hani and Hilalai. Hani, you start. So you are university in university and living away from home. Are you employed? 
do you have a job? I'm making a, a living by cooking. I am chef in a restaurant in Montreal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chef, yeah. Uh, 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 Elala, please repeat. I, sure. I make I, I'm, I make a living. I make a living by cooking. I'm chef in a restaurant in Montreal. Okay, good. Okay, okay. I'm gonna go to the next one. <laughs> you know, I wanted our conversations here to be dramatic so i chose pictures like this um okay ibrahima and 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 jen 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 and ibrahima yeah ibrahima you start okay i can start you didn't do over 10 work last night you were out having beer with your friends instead to going home don't fool me. I hate being lied lied to. You drive me up the wall. Knock it off. You know that's not true. <laughs> you know, can I tell something to Ibrahima? Ibrahima, you know, I like the way you're reading. Uh, your pronunciation is a little bit of French. But your feeling when you are reading is correct. And that is a good future for you. You're going to have a good future in English. Because you know how to put feelings into the sentences. And that is very, very important. Okay. You know, like in Canada, if you want, um, if you want your uh, English to be closer to the Canadian accent, you have to put <coughs> drama into your speaking okay okay so yeah and you did a great job there Thank okay you. next let's have jethro and mamun okay jethro. okay you're gonna start or yeah, yeah I'll start. Start. okay what well, okay uh i start yes yeah, yeah. Okay, look who is here. Great to see you. Sp uh, Spoya. Spoya. Sophia. 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 How have you been? Okay, I'll uh, I'll start reading. <laughs> <I'll> okay. st <laughs> how how come I tell him? I, I I have to say his name. I shouldn't say Sophia, right? Because I, I ta I'm talking to Jethro. No, 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 it's okay, it's okay. Don't change. Okay, okay you, you can change you can change to Jethro, no problem. Yeah. Okay, look who is here. Great to see you. Jethro, how have you been? So far, so good. I have been so busy though. But busy is good, right? You're yeah. Beautiful, love it. Very good, uh, Jethro and Mamon. You did a great job there. Okay, so next, next, let's have uh, Maritza and Nina. Maritza, go. So you, sorry. So you said that you applied for a job at TDSB and did not get it. Why TDSB? I mean, why Toronto? It's so, it's too far. Come again. I am so sorry. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> okay, very good. Listen to this, everybody. You know, this number 18, 80% was wrong. Yes, 80% of the students said that was a blessing in this guys. <laughs> Okay, now the reason why you answered that was a blessing in disguise is because maybe you're thinking that working for, D for TDSB is a blessing, okay? 
but a blessing in disguise is a situation that looks negative at first and later you find out that it was actually a positive thing but a blessing in disguise in this situation does not work and look at this i have goosebumps does not work so the only thing that works is somebody told you something and you missed it so you say come again i'm so sorry i was paying i wasn't paying attention come again means repeat come again come again okay <clears throat> okay so a lot of people there were mistaken uh, uh did not get the correct answer okay next let's have ronald and saja ronald you start um oh my gosh i completely forgot about it uh it's due tomorrow please get it for me i need it um not again you are very upset minded is it i don't know saja you got it but your your music is not correct saja you say not again you're very absent minded yeah. not again no. you know not again i know i know i know you don't feel well. <laughs> so, sorry um, the kids around me i can't talk again <laughs> oh, no it's okay you're very absent minded Okay, Sadja, say not again. Okay, go. No? <laughs> okay, let's go to number number 20. Okay, number 20 is decline. Decline. Okay, let's have uh, Shala and the gender. Shala, you start. Yeah, you decide. Uh... You decide your 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 permission because no sorry you this this line your permission because of your family that was a lot of money. Well, they are my priority. Without them, I am nothing. Beautiful. That's a beautiful answer. Now, everybody, what I like you, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing this. I want to talk to you. Um, what I like you to do. No, I, I want to tell you something. Give me a second. Okay. What I like you to uh, pay attention in my class is do not just pay attention to grammar, pronunciation. Yeah, you know, I like you to pay attention also to the culture of the language. Okay. Because uh, if you notice, if you look at the conversations that I created, those conversations, okay? If you look at the conversations I created, I make sure that I inject Canadian culture. I inject being positive, being a good father, good husband, uh, how to argue with people, you know, when people are lying to you or something like that, you know. Uh, there are so many things that I am teaching in the class that is more than english okay like for example i'll give you an example when the daughter said daddy do you love me and the father said i i you are my life my everything okay so if you look at this sentence and you use it uh when you're talking with your children even they have no questions if they are sick and they are lying in bed you sit with them and then just touch the forehead like this and you say i love you i came to canada because of you i want to give you a good life you are my life my everything and your children become stronger when they hear these loving thoughts and uh, sentences from the father you know this is one thing i like you to uh, to remember and uh, if you uh, communicate with your children in, a, in that way in a loving respectful way you listen to their opinions you will see you don't need to control them in the future. When they, when you say, you don't need to say, focus on your education, don't have a girlfriend. They will know what to do. They will know what not to do so that they will not hurt you. Because you built that relationship with them when they were young, right? 
just like for example, you know, for example, you know, like Andres, I told Andres one time, I said, Andres, you know, I love what how you communicate with your with your you know, with your son. Okay. And I see Andres like talking with the son every day, you know, on camera and uh, talking to the mother and father about his life in Canada, how he's working hard, how his plan for the future. You know, I love that. You know, it's very, very important that we communicate with our parents, with our children, our relatives, brothers and sisters back home, because in that way, in the future, you know, um, you, you become a very important uh, part of the family. Okay. And I know that uh, for a fact in, in my case, in my case, right? Like in my family, when I go home and I speak with my brothers, even the older people, they, they, they listen when I speak because they know that I have always lived my life correctly. And if I fail in other areas, they still know that it's not me because they know me more than other people, right? Okay. And so just like, um, and, and so, yes, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy. That's why uh, Andres, I'm, I'm proud of you really, you know, when I, when I see you doing that with your children and I mean it. Okay, I'm not saying it to to make you happy. I'm just telling the truth. Okay, so anyway, um, now everybody, you know, like we have a long lesson that I did not, I was not able to cover, but I'm gonna show it to you. This is the lesson I planned. I'm gonna stop recording. Okay, um, okay, let me stop recording. <laughs>